Hi everyone, my name is Victor and I am one of the authors of Technic.com. Today, I'm going to show you how to change the default boot to previous Linux kernel version. Alright, so in one of our um, RHC SA8 videos where we talked about managing the Linux kernel, we looked at how to rightly update the Linux kernel and I also said that when you update the Linux kernel and your system, as a result, as a result of that, your system starts misbehaving, there is a way you can actually revert to the old kernel and make the old kernel your default, um, um, the default kernel that will boot when the system starts, alright? So I'm just going to show you the step-by-step -step process of, of how to do that in this video. And um, also, a quick one, if you're going to be writing the average CAC8 exam or the SUSE Linux exam or the LSCS exam, just come to this website i'm going to be dropping the link to this website in the description section below all right and click on the exam practice questions you can see where my cursor is right and um, it's very important you practice before you write the exam and um on the website too at the end of every tutorial also there is a practice question pertaining to that tutorial all right you can just scroll down and uh, you can click on the question as well all right so um we're going to be updating this website from time to time, even with the Suze Linux exam, um, exam practice questions and the LSTS exam practice questions, alright? So you can just subscribe to this channel or subscribe to our, our newsletter to always get the update. Okay. The first thing you're going to do is to confirm the, the default kernel the system is running on. And to do that, you use the command uname hyphen r, alright? So you can see that the system is running on this 4.180-193 kernel. This is actually a Red Hat 8 system. Okay. So the next thing we're going to do is to, is to confirm the kernels that are installed on the system. And to do that, we we'll use the command RPM, I think QA followed by kernel. So you can see that there are two kernels that are currently installed on the system. So the this system was formerly running on this kernel, all right, before we upgraded it to this kernel. If you if you follow me through the average CSA 8 course, that was what we did. So what we want to do now is to revert to this old kernel, all right. So what we're going to do next is to check for the available menu entries. Just It's just a way to be sure what you're doing. So what I'm going to do is to copy the commands to do that um, um, on the website all right so I'm going to be pasting the link to the website in the description section below so that if you also want to copy the commands you can easily copy the commands all right so all right so we can't see um, any menu entries all right so this is a red at eight system so um, to do that let's just um, go for the index or, or the numerical numbers um in the article i explained what saved entries are and what menu entries are all right so um the main purpose of this video is to just show you the step-by-step -step process of how to revert to the old kernel and uh, make it and make it um, the default kernel when the system boots all right but if you want to learn more about it you can just come to this website come to this website all right uh, where i explain everything about what it is um, in the understanding the subject matter section the commands to check for a bootloader what the bootloader is and um, what it entails explaining how to change the default linux kernel version and what it entails all right so and i also have um, a diagram um, of the menu entries and the saved entries all right so you can just click on the link in the description section to learn more. So to verify by using the mapped index, you use the command Ruby, all right, followed by the default index. So you can see that the default index is zero. The next thing we need to do is to make a backup of the group grub.cfg config file all right so i'm just going to copy the command as well from the website and i'm going to paste it in here 
all right so i'm going to just make a backup of this file right and i'm going to call it this um, file it's um, good to always make a backup of a file if you're going to be doing some changes all right so i have the backup before so i'm just going to overwrite that okay so um the next step is to set the saved entry to the desired startup kernel from the menu entries all right so you know when we did the command rpm i think qa kernel so um this is zero all right um from the index so that's why you are seeing that the default index is zero so this would act at, as zero rather and this would act as one the, the numerical value for this would act as one all right so what we want to do now is to set this to be one all right and the command to use to do that oh before we do that let's still do um, another confirmation all right so i'm just going to copy the command and i'm going to paste this paste it here i want to confirm the saved the already saved entry that we have so you can see that the kernel the save save entry we have is this just to confirm that we are actually running on this kernel here all right okay so now to set the value okay we use the command grubby set default index equals one all right so you can now see that the default is this with index and the kernel boot vm linux is this all right you can also use this command to set your value group to set default one all right so usually i use this command when i'm on a red hat 7 system so just because i'm doing this on a red hat 8 system that's why i have used this command but whichever one you use is going to work for you all right so now i'm going to confirm the default value again the saved entry now so i'm just going to do this so you can see that the kernel has changed as look at the new saved entry all right so the next step to to take is to build the bootloader which is the group 2 configuration file so for a bio system like mine to do that i'm going to use the command i'm just going to copy and paste the command from the website as well all right so this would would build the bootloader for a ufi based system i also have the command on the website so let's rebuild All right, so the next step is to reboot the system okay and let's see what we have when the system comes up now our system is back up so let's check the um, default saved entry all right so we can still see that our saved entry is the kernel we want to revert to all right so let's also check the mapped index now by using the Ruby command all right so you can see that the default index is now one and if you also check the new kernel you're running on all right so just do your name i think r so you can see that you're back to the old kernel and when your system boots it will definitely boot with this kernel okay so thank you for watching and please subscribe to this channel. Bye for now.